Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to take a look at how to build this uh, staggered list in Ionic. Uh, so I'll just do a quick demonstration of that now so you know what I'm talking about. So if I just refresh the app here, you can see that the list items that I have in the application uh, pop in sort of one at a time rather than uh, all appearing at once or all animating in at once. Uh, each item has uh, more delay than the last item. So it gives this uh, staggered effect uh, as they load. So this is a pretty common sort of uh, animation um, and it's pretty easy to find examples of how to do this. Uh, typically the way that it's done, uh, or at least the way I've seen it done and the way uh, I would do it myself usually, uh, is with SAS. And so the basic concept behind making this staggered animation work is that we're applying the same basic animation to each of these items. We're just, uh, in this example, we're just uh, expanding them and translating them a little. Uh, you could do whatever you want. You could have them pop in from the left, for example. Uh, the animation itself isn't that uh, important. The main point is that uh, each item following the last has a little bit more delay on the animation than the one preceding it. So perhaps this uh, item animates in instantly. This one maybe has a 50 millisecond delay. This one has a 100 millisecond delay. This one has a 150 millisecond delay uh, and so on. And so we can pretty easily create this delay in CSS using the nth child uh, selector. So I'm just gonna bring that up. nth child pseudo selector CSS. And let's just have a quick look at that here. And so basically what it does is it allows you to grab um, a certain number uh, child within a parent. So uh, this, for example, we have paragraph nth child two, so it's going to grab uh, the second paragraph element. And so we can use that concept in this situation here. So we have some ion items inside of an ion list. We could say, uh, get the first nth child, give it a delay of 50, millisecond, uh, 50 milliseconds, grab the second nth child, give it a delay of 100, grab the third, give it 150, and so on in that fashion, we can just manually write the CSS to create this kind of animation just by changing the delay for each one. So from that description, you can probably tell it's a little bit of work to have to manually write out uh, different rules for each item we have, or at least each item we want to animate. And so that's where SAS comes into it generally. So SAS is uh, a preprocessor for uh, CSS. So basically we just have some extra things we can work with. We can write more sort of programmatic CSS rules. And with SAS, what we can easily do is create a loop that will just automatically create those rules for us. We have a little iterator going and it will just automatically create all the CSS rules we need to satisfy the conditions to create this staggered list so that it creates those manual CSS rules for us. So as I was saying, that is what I would typically do. Uh, but uh, more and more these days, I'm trying to see you know, how to do things without uh, extra tools or libraries or whatever. Uh, as you've probably seen, if you've been following my videos and tutorials, I've been using Stencil a lot, which is nice because it's you know, not a framework. It doesn't have all these dependencies. Uh, it's just kind of like developing uh, directly with JavaScript and the platform, which is nice to do, I think. Uh, so I wanted to investigate around to see if we could do this kind of thing pretty easily without having to include SAS. And it turns out there is a pretty cool technique for uh, doing that. And it uses another one of my favorite new features, uh, CSS uh, variables. So I came across this solution uh, in this article by uh, Daniel Benmore on CSS tricks. And he was basically uh, playing around the similar sort of concept, uh, seeing how it can be done without uh, without SAS, can we just do this directly in CSS? And he eventually settled on a technique, which I will try to just quickly bring up here. Uh, so the basic idea was that uh, you would just mark each of the elements with a CSS variable, uh, specifying the order it would be in the animation. So saying we want this one to animate in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So we apply that style to the element and then we just use that uh, to calculate the animation delay. So then you just multiply the uh, animation order or whatever you call that CSS variable that you've defined on the element. You just multiply that by the delay you want to have for each um, element. And that's just going to automatically uh, handle that for you. 
And so the benefit of doing it this way is that we don't need to use uh, SAS. This is just built into CSS. It's just a platform thing. Uh, so we can just do it out of the box. And I will quickly try and find, I think he has an example here of um, uh, the SAS, what that would look like. Uh, so here, this is basically what it would look like in SAS, which uh, is reasonably nice, but the downsides are that uh, this sort of can end up creating additional CSS classes you don't need. And we need to obviously have SAS included in the project. So uh, if you don't have SAS included, you can't use it. Or if you don't know how to use SAS, it becomes a bit difficult to create. Uh, so basically, I just wanted to take this concept that Daniel has proposed here and uh, implement that in an Ionic application, which is what I've done here. And so the same, the concept in general is pretty much the same as what Daniel has done here, uh, just with a few tweaks to make it work in this context. Uh, so I'm just going to show you that solution and uh, talk through it a bit. So the basic idea of what I wanted to implement was having this uh, sort of dynamic list. So I want it to be able to support you know, an unlimited number of items, not necessarily have to have a specific uh, amount of items already in the template that we would manually add this animation order to. So what I've done basically is just set up a, uh, just a dummy array of items here. I've just named one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, this could be anything. It could be coming from some other uh, data source. That's fine. And then I just have a map to map out the various items from that array. Uh, this is, of course, a stencil JS application. Uh, if you were using uh, Angular, React, whatever, uh, it would all be the same basic idea. You just use whatever um, technique you have in your framework to um, dynamically render out a list of items to the template. And so if you are using React, this would look very similar because uh, we're using JSX here as well. Uh, Angular will look a bit different and you'd use an ng4 loop instead. But still, we have the same basic concept here of adding a style tag to each of the items in the list and then specifying this animation order. And to make this dynamic, I'm setting that animation order to be the index of whatever uh, element in the loop through the array, whatever index we're currently up to, we're going to set that as the animation order. So that's going to go uh, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, and it's going to apply that to each of the elements. And there is a little bit of an extra gotcha here because we are using uh, TSX instead of JSX. Uh, this is ty uh, basically TypeScript JSX. Uh, there is some issues with types here. It doesn't like us trying to assign uh, this value to a CSS variable here because we can't just, um, usually we would have our properties looking like this, for example. Say if I was using a margin, I would just say margin. Uh, and set it to something. But with the CSS variables, we have this dash dash um, syntax, which uh, causes a bit of problems here. So what we need to do is just surround that with quotation marks. And we also need to say as any to get rid of the type issue here. If we don't have as any, this is going to complain that type number is not assignable to type string. So if you're just using JSX, this shouldn't be a problem. If you're using TSX, then you'll need to make sure to do that. And again, if you're using Angular, this um, won't really apply at all. So we've got the animation order in there. And so let's just check what that actually looks like. So we'll jump back into the application and we should be able to inspect these and go to each of them. So let's go to the first item in the list and we'll see here it has animation order zero. Go to the second one, animation order one, two, three, four, five, uh, and so on for each of the items in the list. So now that we have that style applied, we can make use of that style. And you can see here to create the animation, uh, I just have an animation to find here called pop in. All this is doing is um, changing the opacity and the transform uh, of the element. So that's just the general animation we're using that causes it to kind of pop in. Again, that's not super important in this context. The animation could be whatever you like. Uh, the important thing is the animation delay that we're setting here. So you can see that all we're doing is using calc to perform a calculation in CSS here. We're taking the animation order variable that we have defined uh, on the ion item element, and then we're multiplying that by 70 milliseconds uh, to create our delay amount. So what this animation here means is that we're using the pop-in animation as defined here. We want that animation to last 0.2 seconds. We want the 
uh, animation delay. So how long we'll wait before starting that animation to be the animation order times 70 milliseconds. So that means the delay on the first item is going to be zero and then 70, 140 and so on. Uh, this is the fill mode both. So basically um, at the start of the animation, we want the element to have the properties from the beginning of the animation. And after the animation finishes, we want our element to retain those final properties. Uh, so that's why we use the both animation fill mode. And then we're just using an ease in uh, easing. So the animation will begin um, slow and sort of speed in. Uh, but the main point here is this delay. That's the bulk of what is happening, uh, the logic we need to make that staggering effect. And so that's all there is to this uh, animation really. So let's just have another quick look at that. We'll refresh it and we can see those pop in. Uh, so this is just, yeah, a cool technique I came across uh, recently that I wanted to share with you because I think it's awesome. Uh, it's great that you don't need to include SAS if you don't want to. And it's also cool that it uses CSS variables and it's all just you know, on the platform. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, of course, I don't want to take any credit for the general uh, technique here. I came across it through this article by Daniel, uh, which is yeah, absolutely great. It was an awesome read. I'd recommend uh, coming here, having a look at various uh, different methods he tried as well and uh, why certain things didn't work and why others are better uh, than other techniques. Uh, so thanks to Daniel for that one and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.